First thing we want to talk about is the safety factor. Everything about aviation, if you can make it safer, you've added value. Landing platforms have a limitation in their size and their ability to fit them in your hangar. They take a lot of space. Hangers are getting hard to come by. And hangers big enough for multiple aircraft is tough. And sometimes just being able to park an airplane in and add one extra car is a big deal. So size of a helicopter, if it's bigger, it's safer. But if it's too big, it doesn't fit anywhere. So we did this. Our first feature, folding wings. It lets us have the biggest helicopter landing platform on the market. And we've got several different sizes available, but it's also the smallest helicopter landing platform in your hangar. So when the sides fold all the way up, you can still park a car next to it. You can park another airplane next to it. You can park the helicopter right up against the wall. And even if you have a three or four blade rotor and park like it away from glove. the wall, you can park things next to it. And that has real value. And again, having a wider landing platform to land on has real safety. One of the things that's really important to us as well is durability and lack of maintenance. So even though we've got these really big actuators to lift some really heavy duty wings, we wanted something you never had to deal with oil or mess on the floor. This helicopter landing platform has no hydraulics, no pump, no lines to leak, no high pressure hoses to worry about bursting and causing an issue in the hangar or underneath the tug. They're a lot more expensive actuator, but they're a linear actuator. They're gear driven, ball screw, there's zero maintenance for life. So more durability, more speed, more reliability, no maintenance, we think that's a good thing. The next thing, and maybe even one of the biggest things for us with a helicopter landing platform, wasn't just the size for safety, but being able to get it out of the way for people. And there's several platforms and lifting platforms and landing platforms on our field, and all of them said the same thing. They don't go in grass. They don't go on wet ramp if because we get this oily ramp when it's raining and they don't go anywhere if there's any snow or ice or slush at all. And we like to fly year round. So this is the first and only tug of its kind in the world with four wheel drive. Uh, I, I know I said it right. It's actually four wheel drive. It's got differentials on it. It's got very large motors. And with those large motors, we're up to 50% faster than our competitors and well more than double the range than any of our competitors. Because for us, we want to be able to get it out of the hangar and get it out of people's way and do it in a hurry and then leave the tug out. Have it all weather, have it ready to sit out in the rain and we come back in land, we can put it away. The reason this is so important for us is you don't want to have to pull the helicopter out, pick up the chopper, set down, put the tug somewhere else, and then fly away and then do it all over again. What we want is a helicopter that we can pull out and just push it off into the grass and be able to come back out again or push it off the side of the hangar and come out. Or if we don't even want to drive it back into the hangar, we've closed the hangar door and we lift the helicopter off and set down. We want to be able to just grab the remote off the seat next to us in the helicopter, drive the tug away, put it on the side of our hangar, fold up the wings if we want, touch a button, and from our remote control, we can completely shut down all the electronics on this tug disable it in a nice safe position, safe out of people's way, but not have to deal with opening and closing the hangar door again. Then when we land, one button on the remote control, it closes the circuit on the master contactor, that tug's awake, it's ready for you to, to maneuver into a new place, or if you've already got it like we do where we've got a place we can leave it, you just leave it and when you hit the remote, turn it back on, it turns on all the lights on the tug, even at night, so you can have a nice, stabilized, well-lit landing uh, platform to come in onto. And because the tug was designed to go off the asphalt and out into the grass where it's out of the way, we also knew eventually somebody's going to get it stuck. Now we've had a lot of fun with this tug, playing it with it on the slushiest, soggiest, nastiest, wet grass with snow on it, and it's difficult to get stuck. We're really, really happy with it. We're even climbing mild hills with it and, and honestly blown away. We're so happy with its performance. But eventually someone's going to take it a little too far, and that's okay. We designed into the tug heavy duty D-rings on four points on the tug at the safest places to pull the tug. So whether you got it stuck or somehow it was disabled from a bad battery or someone lost the remote control or heaven forbid something went wrong, you can hook up and move the tug. And our tug has the ability to, with, by lifting just two levers, put all the transmissions into neutral and drag the tug out of the way. Uh, you're not left stranded skidding tires to maneuver the tug if you were in a disabled event. You can neutral it and pull it out of the way with just a little help of your friends. 
aircraft, we wanted to make sure that this thing was well lit. A lot of our flying for search and rescue is at night. It seems like nobody calls search and rescue for help until the sun's gone down. That's when the family panics and says, it's dark, now I'm really worried about my kids. So we're gonna be dispatching at night and we're gonna be coming back at night. So we wanted it really well lit. We've got eight wide broadcasting lenses all the way around the tug. And we've got the point, the approach and departure end of the tug lighting up kind of a runway, lit runway out the two sides that matter. And then the other lights point out the side and it gives the entire tug platform an underglow effect. So it's easy to spot from a distance. Let's say it's raining, you have a nice glow all the way around. As you get closer, it becomes real clear and obvious where your landing spot is. We have a siliconed multi-LED rope light all the way around the platform that can take the impact of people stepping on and off the tug it's flexible silicone top, and so you can't get down to the light if you really pound on it, but it lights up all the parameter of the tug, and it lights it up in a way that you know which is the correct way to approach and depart so that the sides can fold up when you're done. We also put the traditional green landing lights in the four corners to give you that extra visibility as you're coming in. The other thing that does is it gives you a really good perspective as you approach the tug. The rope lighting with the green lights transition three-dimensionally to give you an indication if you're coming in steep or shallow and it doesn't take much time to get used to it. So it's another added safety feature, the right lighting in the right places to make your night landings just that much safer. Another big challenge with big equipment like this, it's big, it's heavy, you need a forklift to unload it and then you need a day to put it all together. We didn't want that for our customers. The other challenge is we knew that when people would be lifting this with a forklift, if they're not perfectly centered based on the CG, not visually where it's centered, but the center of gravity for the tug, um, they're gonna topple it and it could get away from a forklift and damage a very expensive piece of equipment. So we engineered the forklift ports to a standard size for any major forklift so that you can pick it up from the right end. This end is our heavy end of the tug and the forklift holes are permanently built in, welded in when you go to pick it up and, and move it off of a trailer or to another location, nothing's gonna slide, nothing's gonna move. You're just moving it safely. And if you come in from the side, you'll see these forklift holes are not centered. They're exactly where they need to be, the, be for the center of gravity for the tug. And then with our sides on the tug, the way they fold up, you'll be able to pull some pins, the sides come in farther and have another mechanism to lock them into place so that when it gets to your location, there shouldn't be any hardware or time with bolts it's have someone help you lift the the wings out put in the pin and then run it with the actuators the other thing that we thought was really important is that we need to know no matter what on uneven ground or even abuse over time that these wings are going to end up perfectly flat so that it's a safe smooth platform to land on that's why there's delron pads that aren't ever going to wear out on you that align the wings perfectly every time they come walk into these pockets and you're flat. Another feature we're really excited about and anybody with a turbine helicopter will really appreciate is onboard power because turbines they're expensive if you hot start them you're gonna buy a new motor and nobody wants to buy a new motor so for avionics updates or for even starting your helicopter you've got built-in GPU right there so you can start, someone can unplug you and send you on your way without the big heavy hit on your batteries. A lot of times the batteries, when they take those big heavy hits, you replace them a lot sooner than you need to. So whenever you have a GPU available, use it. You'll buy batteries less often and they're thousands of dollars. Another feature we're really excited about and certainly not the last, but it'll be the last for this video because I could talk about all the little things that went into this tug for hours. The last feature we want to show you as an option for those of you that can have it in your hangar is onboard fuel. Up to 300 gallons of onboard fuel. To run a fuel down the freeway, you need a dual wall fuel tank. And that's safe for being on the highway with people texting next to you at 75 miles an hour. And then we know what the structural requirements are for fuel tanks at a helicopter. And helicopters regularly land right next to a fuel tank. Scares me to death, but we still do it every time we need to refuel at our airport. But without having to start up and shut down to refuel, especially for those times you just wanted to add 30 gallons, this tank has up to 300 gallons of onboard Jet A. Triple wall, safe, I would argue, 
safer in a lot of regards than landing next to a fuel tank or a fuel pump anywhere on the field. So there she is built into the tug. It's four wheel drive. It's got folding wings. It's got GPU built into it. It'll go faster and farther than anything else on the market. We're really excited about it. We hope you are too. If you know somebody that would be interested, please share this video with them. And it comes from those of us here at Best Tugs and Best Aviation Products. We hope you're as excited as we are. Let's go have fun.